Mystique made the cover of American Cinematographer. Rebecca Romagen, model, actress, best-looking woman they could find. The request was nude, with scales. We tested the idea with a model before Rebecca was hired. Her breasts were the only 3D application. The rest of the appliances were flat, patterned directly on her body, not unlike a tailor would with a piece of fabric. The difference here was that our fabric took on the form with no tailoring. It also safely adhered to and moved with the skin itself. Food coloring colored both prosthetics and the skin, keeping both transparent. It was beautiful. This is Tanya Richards' drawing of Rebecca as Mystique. Mystique's eye designs are pinned to the wall with it. An average body her size has about 18 square feet of surface area. We needed a lot of prosthetics. This is her back prosthetic. Notice how translucent it is. The yellows of her skin under it will shift the color between the scales toward turquoise. This is its master positive mold. It is also the original mold of Evan Penny's sculpt. In order to achieve control over the size and shape of each individual scale, Evan carved the various scales into his tools to push into flattened beds of wax, sculpting in reverse as a negative. That way, he could concentrate on the scale's patterns over the different parts of the body. Marianne Lovink and Anne McLaren work on those molds as Evan hovers patiently, waiting to see his final sculpts. Here, Marianne Lovink and Carolyn Demoy work with makeup artist Linda Dodds to put that back prosthetic on Rebecca. The trick is not to capture air under the appliance. Given it is so thin, even the smallest bubble can be seen. Lifting and trying again is the only way to solve that problem. The beauty here is that you can lift that appliance and try again as often as you like. You cannot damage the appliance, nor will you affect the quality of the bond of the skin. That is not to say the stick will last forever. It is a porous and sticky material, which means over time it will have picked up enough dead skin cells and dirt from the air to lose its stick forever, just like you powdered it. The girls have left the plastic on the lower part of the appliance to deal with that application separately. That is why, other than for handling, we always kept the sticky side of the appliance covered in plastic until we needed it. edges were still glued down as we did the spots. The rest of the appliance stuck perfectly well all on its own. By X-Men 2 we lost the glue and substituted it with gel 10. It worked much better with far less effort and far less mess. It limited how many times we could reuse the prosthetic but the safety and movement benefits were worth it. To make it, first we colored our silicone, platinum gel 10, with our cosmetic grade food coloring. With that, we filled all the scales and spots, scraping off any remaining materials on the surface of the mold. We then added a thin layer to connect all the scales and spots together, 
thin but strong enough to pull all the scales out of the mold together as one prosthetic. Over that we added a backing layer of soft silicone gel which was our self-sticking layer. The quality of the stick is evident. How it moves is evident. The appliance stretched and returned. Every muscle movement exposed. You can see the turquoise hue from the yellows of her own skin now beautifully highlighting the scale patterns as they flow across her body. Her shin and upper knee appliances. I'd like to say it's as easy as that, but it is. Her calf prosthetics, again, seeing is believing. John Gaglioni saw Mystique as the future of couture. Given this was our first attempt, I believe he's right. I mean, all the properties of the materials on display here are made for the world of couture, safe to both make and wear. Every different material has its own unique properties designers used for their own creative advantage, just like we did, which gave John Gaglioni the opportunity to see the character in action and the prosthetics on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City in an exhibition called Superheroes, Fashion and Fantasy in 2009. This footage was taken in 1999. So far, no glue. The stick is evident. Even after stretching the prosthetic into shape, it is evident. At this point, it's not going anywhere but the edges can still be lifted, so we glued them down. I'd love to show you the difference to this part of the process when we substituted glue for gel 10, but I can't. You'll just have to believe me that it worked. This is a master of her hand prosthetics. This is the urethane mold of the arms and upper hands. In some cases, we separated the appliance into its parts for easier application. In this case, we kept the upper and lower arm appliance as one. It had to sit on her arm as designed where it would not fold when she bent her arm. That principle was used in the sculpt and the location of every appliance.
Then the edges need to be glued down. Her shoulders marked the edge of the upper arm. This is one of her breast molds, taken from this original negative sculpt in wax. Tanya Richards works on building that mold. We added a thickness to mask her nipples. Neither our model, Rebecca, or Vicki Phillips, her stunt double, had any issues with comfort. The same prosthetic adapted to each of them seamlessly. The upper leg and thigh were my favorite appliances. Here is the prosthetic on its back covered in plastic to keep it clean. Carolyn Demoy peels the plastic off the appliance, preparing it for application. Before getting to this point, the ladies would have had to deal with her crotch appliance. It was the first problem we had solved before saying the job could be done at all. She had to be able to take it off and put it back on herself, or it really was a pointless exercise. Self-sticking was the only possible answer. The way this prosthetic took on Rebecca's shape and moved with her, I found remarkable. Evan's scale patterns flowed over the body just like they did on any body we put them on. Marianne Lovick and Carolyn Demoy are both extraordinary artists and have been integral to this project from design to execution. They know precisely how the scale patterns have been designed to accent the shape of her body. We are acutely aware of how far we are pushing the envelope. It was exciting to see it all come together after so much work in the studio. Here they glue down the edges and connect the knee to the upper calf. cheeks. I have already lightly glued the edges of the appliance.
Rebecca doesn't like it so close to her eyes. No problem. I'll just take it off and then I'll put it on again. I don't know how much simpler a prosthetic can be. I glue the edges of the next cheek appliance. And I put it on. This is the mold from which they made her spots. Her spots were the hook that tied the makeup together. They took your eye to where they stopped, not the edge of the larger prosthetics. As it was, it was the last thing to be done before paint. Paint was a nightmare in regards to the volume of coverage no ventilation, which you can see, in the middle of a freezing winter where opening the door is just as problematic. Artist Tanya Richards, makeup artist Linda Dowds, and artist Julie Poole took on the job. It was grueling work. I found it difficult to watch, given had we used food coloring, it would have taken minutes and looks so much better. Especially because every other character we did on the film, I did with food coloring. Toad, for example. We had no choice but to abandon that approach when Brian Singer declared he wanted a shot of her in the rain. Never happened. Instead, we added hours of makeup every day. The thing I liked best about food coloring, other than the way it looked, was that it was safe and naturally disappear as soon as the body sheds its dead skin cells, which it did every day. I had a product called Duran, used by the ink industry, that removed all of the pigment in about an hour. It was all we needed to know to give the idea legs. I suggested a sauna, a hot shower, removal approach, then Duran if necessary. Or don't worry about it, because you don't have to, and block your scenes together. The time and money saved would be substantial. Instead of thousands of dollars worth of airbrush equipment, a sea sponge. As difficult as all the airbrushing was, getting it off was worse. We left her hands and head 
until the end. Other than all the alcohol in the air, another problem with the body paint was that it had castor oil in it, which means it needed substantial powdering to take the shine out of it. On X-Men 2, I had Kenny Myers and Premier Products remove the castor oil. We still powdered, but nothing like this. Hair. This little hair piece is what made Donna Glidden's wig really work well. Her hairstylist, Kelly Shanks, has prepared Rebecca for her wig, with that lace piece hugging her neck. The next element is a thin piece of colored, self-sticking silicone to lay under the lace front of the wig. Tanya Richards applies it with Kelly, pinning and trimming it to fit. Donna Glidden's wig is already styled before it goes on. Vicki Phillips. Vicki Phillips was Rebecca's stunt double. She had her own wig, but other than that, she wore the same prosthetics as Rebecca. Forehead. We considered the idea of blending the forehead appliance into the wig, but abandoned that for a clean, masked edge. Once on, it pulls the whole thing together. She's beautiful. The last appliance were her scleral lenses. She wore soft, protected lenses over her iris. Her detail lenses sat on top of that. It worked, but it should have been CG. Rebecca has a condition called dry eyes, which means she shouldn't have had contact lenses in her eyes at all. It was a lot of work, but she was beautiful. Rebecca was beautiful. The character was beautiful. Some set footage we took on the day. The day is not over for Rebecca. 
Her hero lenses have already been removed, and now her protective lens is being removed. As Kelly removes her wig, Rebecca just peels off her facial prosthetics. Two things evident here. The quality of the bond to the skin and the fact that we are not destroying the prosthetic. In fact, they are cleaned and prepped for the next day's application for Vicki Phillips, her stunt double. All things relative, that's a very easy appliance removal, especially because the glue all stays with the prosthetic, leaving her pretty much clean as a whistle. Impatience is the drive in this removal, but you can see the quality of the stick. She's had this on all day long. Most of the effort here is removing the glue, which stays with the prosthetic. We did put a sealer on the skin to protect it from the glue. The appliances were bathed in 99% alcohol to clean them. 99% alcohol removes the stick, but once evaporated, the stick is back. Well, that was the easy part. Now we had to remove all that paint. X-Men 2. It was a gift to get to do this makeup again. The first thing we did was rebuild her forehead appliance so we could punch a two-inch hairline into it. The wig on the right is like X-Men 1, the other X-Men 2. The approach saved us a lot of work and looked great. The second thing we did was cover more of her body with prosthetics to cut down on paint time. Her whole makeup looked better. Toad. This is where the design for Toad started, but that was CG. Magnifying glasses or goggles could do much the same thing without CG. We built a set of lenses to solve different performance issues. Clear, dark, magnified, non-magnified. We gave them a number of choices. His tongue was built around a dental bite plate made for him so he could hold his tongue and his mouth in the proper position. His spit is a solidifying gel. This spit was made to be added and removed quickly. Color. In this test, we got to illustrate how far we could go with food coloring. Toad's makeup, other than a few silicone warts, was a food coloring makeup. I wanted to go simple with a bright yellow, a color that is almost hard to see until seen beside someone else that is not bright yellow. It was easy to do, but only because we had the cosmetics industry mix us colors dense enough. Also because we had a special hand cleaner for reducing dyes called Reduran from the ink industry. It took all the stain away in five to ten minutes. Our ability to model the surface was easy to achieve with water and a sea sponge. Using multiple colors was also not a problem. It always looked totally natural. The thing I liked about food coloring is that no particle was being added, just color. The skin stayed exactly the same with its own imperfections. It was just a different color. I call that a perfect makeup.
you see why I wanted to apply this same approach to mystique. If you found this video interesting or educational, then you'll enjoy part two and three where I document our prosthetic designs for Sabretooth, Senator Kelly, and Nightcrawler. I add to that the encapsulated photographic tattoo prosthetics we pioneered for the television pilot of Fringe. The Benjamin Button series documents both silicone head casting and an exploration into approaches to translucent silicone gel prosthetic fabrication outside of even our box. To learn more, enjoy my candid autobiography. Two volumes. It's available on Amazon and Kindle. Be safe. If you found this video interesting or educational, then you'll enjoy part two and three where I document our prosthetic designs for Sabretooth, Senator Kelly, and Nightcrawler. I add to that the encapsulated photographic tattoo prosthetics we pioneered for the television pilot of Fringe. The Benjamin Button series documents both silicone head casting and an exploration into approaches to translucent silicone gel prosthetic fabrication outside of even our box. To learn more, enjoy my candid autobiography. Two volumes. It's available on Amazon and Kindle. Be safe.